Gimli, son of Gloin, nephew of Oin, was a dwarf from Durin's tribe. He was not a member of the royal line, but still a descendant from Durin the Deathless, father of the oldest dwarven tribe. Gimli was also the first cousin, once removed, of Balin, future Lord of Moria, and his brother Dvalin. To list just his famous relatives. Gimli was born in Blue Mountains and was living there still when Thorin was looking for companions for his quest to regain Erebor. Gimli wanted to join his father and uncle and set on this adventure, but was prevented from participating due to his age. Being in his sixties, he was still considered too young by dwarven standards. To be left behind disappointed Gimli a lot. After Dain restored the kingdom under the mountain, Gimli traveled east and settled with his father in the lonely mountain. There they lived happily for many a year, until an emissary from Mordor approached the king with an offer of friendship, in exchange for news about Begins and the ring. Dain immediately called for Gloin and Gimli, sending them west to Rivendell to seek Elrond's advice and also with a warning to Bilbo that Sauron is seeking him. After their arrival, they were summoned to the Council of Elrond, where they explained what happened in Erebor, and mentioned their concern for Balin in Moria, who hadn't sent a message for twenty or so years. After the Council decided to send Frodo to Mordor, Gimli, now 139 years old, volunteered to join the Fellowship mainly because he didn't trust Legolas and his intentions. With the Fellowship of the Ring, he endured the attempt to cross the Redhorn Gate, while always wanting rather to go through the mines of Moria, to find out what happened to the Dwarven colony there. His wish was granted when the Pass of Caradras proved unpassable. While in Khazad-dûm, Gimli discovered Balin's tomb and the set end of the rest of the dwarves, after Gandalf fell and the rest of the company entered Lorien, Gimli became the first dwarf to enter this realm since the Balrog awakened in Moria. Due to his presence, all the fellowship members were blindfolded while traveling in the Golden Wood. In there, the strong friendship between Legolas and Gimli began to form. Gimli also became captivated by Galadriel's beauty, even asking her for one strand of her golden hair intending to set it into the impregnable crystal and keeping it as a heirloom of his house. Galadriel generously gave him three, although she refused the same request from Feanor all those ages ago. That's why later Gimli became known as Logbearer. Then the fellowship traveled south to Amonhen, where the Uruk Hai from Isengard attacked them, capturing Merry and Pippin, while Frodo and Sam escaped to the other side of the river Anduin. Gimli, Legolas and Aragorn decided to pursue the orcs and help the prisoners. Eventually, they were reunited with Gandalf. With him, they traveled first to Edoras and later with the Rohirrim force to Helm's Deep, where at the Battle of Hornburg, Gimli played a critical role, defending the entrance into the glittering caves where women and children were covering. Afterwards, he traveled to Isengard to meet the two young hobbits again. Because Isengard was destroyed and Saruman kept prisoner, it was now time to focus on Sauron and the might of Mordor. Aragorn decided to travel south through the Pass of the Dead in an attempt to recruit the army of the dead to help them. Gimli, Legolas and the Grey Company joined him. When they passed through the caves into the Vale of Erech, Aragorn called the dead to fulfill their oath. With the undead army following them, the mad ride to Pelargir began. There, the undead warriors scattered the army of Umbaran corsairs, besieging this capital of southern Gondor, captured their ships and liberated the slaves manning the oars. Thus the army of Gondor, which was defending this part of the realm, could mend the captured ships and sail north to join the battle at the Pelennor fields. During the battle, Gimli once again proved his worth with an axe. After this victory, he journeyed in the host of the west to Moranon and fought in the battle there. After the war, Gimli and Legolas traveled around Middle-earth together, 
visiting Fangorn, Ithilien and other places of beauty for one or the other. Until, finally, Gimli led a group of Durin's folk into glittering caves to settle there, becoming the first lord of the glittering caves himself. His dwarves helped to repair a lot of the damage done during the War of the Ring, most notably rebuilding the Great Gate of Minas Tirith with a new one, made of mithril and steel. All this time his great friendship with Legolas continued, and when Legolas finally decided to leave Middle-earth and sail west, Gimli decided to go with him, not only because of their friendship, but it is said that he also wanted to see Lady Galadriel again. We may only assume whether it was Galadriel herself who obtained for him the grace to be allowed aboard the ship heading for Valinor. But if he ever reached Aman and thus became the first dwarf to ever enter the Blessed Realm is unknown. The fact is that Gimli was never seen in Middle-earth again.